Hi, I'd like to welcome you to a saxophone recital uh, by the Suitland Saxes. I'm your host, Dr. Audrey, and uh, I just want to say that um, I'm really proud of my students. They uh, were supposed to have a recital in person on April 1st, but because of all of this, um, we decided to do it online. Well, I decided to do it online and they um, were nice enough to go along with it. So it's been a lot of work, but um, I think we've learned a lot and I'm just so proud of them. Uh, I think that you're gonna enjoy this program a lot. So sit back, have some popcorn, put your feet up uh, and enjoy yourself. Thank 
Thank mm-hmm. you. 
to set the tarantula. Once lived a tarantula who answered to the name Fouzette. She and her parents lived in the Arizona desert, although, as you may have guessed from the sound of her name, Fouzette was of French extraction. <laughs> Fouzette loved to sunbathe in warm desert sand and would occasionally seek refuge from the sun's rays by nestling herself beneath the shade of her favorite rock. Here, she would either swap stories with other friendly tarantulas or manage to keep busy crocheting large, beautiful webs. Once, in a weaker moment, she even spelled out her name, Fouzette, for all the others to see. It was an accepted fact among those in the know that Fouzette was the most gifted webstress in the entire village. One sultry day, as she was spinning her most elaborate creation, tears came to Fizette's eyes. I am the most talented webstress in the village, he sobbed. And yet I am the only tarantula without a fur coat. And it was true. Fuzette had lost her old fur coat in a terrible windstorm, and now she was a sorry sight indeed. Suddenly, a group of fun-loving tarantulas appeared, and Fuzette, forgetting her troubles for the moment, joined them in the game of tag. Fouzette began to shiver. It was getting dark, and the cool desert air was a painful reminder to her. I don't know how, but I must get myself a fur coat, even if I have to resort to pawning my webs. 
By the time she reached her home, a cozy split-level cactus, Fouzette resolved to announce her decision to her parents. I'm going to sell my web collection to buy a fur coat, she declared. Fouzette's father, a very proud and hardworking tarantula, refused to accept his daughter's plan. You are the finest webstress in the county, he shouted, and I will not permit you to sell your magnificent web collection merely for the price of a coat. Fouzette's large black eyes began to moisten. But I'm the only tarantula in the village without a fur coat. I want to look and be like everyone else, she said. Her mother seemed to understand the situation, but reminded Fouzette that it was time to go to sleep. We can all discuss this another time. Fouzette fell fast asleep beneath the webbed quilt, one of her treasured creations, as her mother hummed an old tarantula folk song. The following morning, as Fouzette was drinking her homogenized cactus milk, her mother's eyes twinkled mischievously. I have a surprise for you, Fouzette, she said. Tomorrow night we are having our annual county fair, and everyone from the village will attend. Fouzette looked very glum and replied, I can't go because I don't have a fur coat. Without one, I just look like a common everyday spider. Fouzette's father became enraged. You don't ever use that word in this split-level cactus house again, young lady. Fouzette said, all right, I won't. She had forgotten that once her ancestors had been nothing more than run-of-the-mill black widows, a fact which the family desperately tried to conceal. Her mother continued, you must come to the fair because they're planning to give away a wonderful prize. I'm really not interested, said Fouzette. I think you will be replied her mother, when I tell you that the prize is to be a stunning black fur coat. Fouzette's eyes widened. A fur coat? Her mother smiled. What's more, it is a well-known legend that the girl who wins the coat also receives a proposal from the most handsome tarantula in town. Fouzette became so excited that she embraced her mother and danced her about the room. The village went all out to make the county fair a great success. Rocks and crevices were decorated with garlands of sagebrush, and exotic snacks were provided by the local's women's club, including tortillas, tamales, and chili con carne. The youngest tarantulas kept themselves occupied on the web spin trampoline while the old folks traded adventure stories. After all, they were unseen witnesses to the growth of the West. Even a few uninvited scorpions made their appearance as the village minstrels provided some dance music.
Finally, the big moment arrived as the Master of Ceremonies took his place on the platform and announced, Fellow neighbors and friends, I have the great pleasure of announcing the winner of this gorgeous imported fur coat. A hush fell over the throng and Fouzette could almost hear her heart beating. Besides, she noticed that the handsome tarantula, Pancho, was attending the festivities and everyone was saying that the winner of the coat would be the winner of his affections. The winner, shouted the announcer, is... Miss Crepella. Everyone went wild, except Fouzette. She practically sobbed aloud as the winner strutted on stage to accept the furry pelt. The orchestra provided a little fanfare to Miss Crepella's victory. <laughs> After the announcement was made, Fouzette, the only tarantula without a fur coat, began to ease her way out of the crowd in an effort to return to her home. She was heartbroken and just couldn't seem to get interested in the celebration. Suddenly, who should appear from behind a decorated cactus but Pancho, the handsome tarantula? He strutted before Fouzette with the great self-assurance and announced, I am Pancho from across the Rio Grande, and you, I presume, are Senorita Fouzette. Fouzette blushed, and because of her self-consciousness, she did a foolish thing. Without saying a word, she turned and ran all the way home. The next day, Pancho called on Fouzette at her home. I was never one to waste words, he said. So I must tell you that I have chosen you to be my bride. But that is impossible, replied Fouzette as she received a gentle kick from her mother. Pancho continued, why is it impossible? I own the most beautiful rock near the Rio Grande and recently inherited a large estate. But most of all, I am very fond of you. As you are, without question, the most dazzling creature in the county. Fouzette just couldn't believe her ears but I'm the only girl in the village without a fur coat. I'm the only one who is different from the others. Why should you choose me? Pancho's teeth flash as he slipped a ring on her finger. Did you actually think that a coat would make a difference to me? It is because you are different that I took notice of you. You are unique, Fouzette, and that is a wonderful quality. But if you wish, I could easily manage to give you a fur coat. Fouzette's eyes glistened with pride. No thank you, Pancho. I can see now that being different from the others is not such a terrible thing after all. Pancho gave a hearty laugh. Caramba! You are too much, Fouzette. Fouzette and Pancho were married the following day. Their home is near the Rio Grande, and Fouzette still crochets webs in beautiful, unusual designs. The village tarantulas love her very much and have nicknamed her Fouzette Saint Abrigo, which means Fouzette without a coat.